Alright guys, here's my Smith & Wesson M&P 9. It's the Pro Series version. It's a little longer, but the, the real thing is the frame. Should be pretty much the same as uh, any full-size M&P. They come with this adjustable back strap, and I think I have mine on medium. That'll kind of affect the thickness here. In any case, I'm applying mostly pressure with these fingers. There's Tink. Tink, could you relax? It's okay. It's all right. Just. Oh, it's Mrs. Farwell coming home. All right, guys. Oh, here we go. Let's show we got a safe gun. safe. Anyways, I'm not going to go over all the finer points of a proper grip, proper uh, freestyle two-handed grip, but the point I'm trying to make is what to do with my uh, strong hand or whatever hand, my right hand, uh, thumb. And I've been told and shown a number of things, and I think the traditional uh, freestyle two hand you've got you know your your proper grip for the your right hand established and then you get your left hand you know wrapped around and I like to put my left thumb out here indexing the rail and that also helps assist in my when I'm trying to keep my left wrist locked uh, for bone support on the left, the support hand. Anyways, a lot of people have this thumb here right on the uh, the meat of the hand that's up here, and that's fine. Uh, but I've noticed that if I want to just grab like shoot one-handed and just grab the gun. Instead of having my thumb down like here where I find it's uh, has a tendency to kind of flex with my trigger finger and that may be an issue I can work away from anyways because my grip, my established grip shouldn't be affected by my, the trigger pull and vice versa but I've found that uh, just based on the grooves, the contour of the grip here on the M&P I, if I move my thumb up here, I can establish contact, a better contact with uh, this part of the frame, which is actually in line with where my thumb, my support hand thumb is on the, fr the frame here. And so I'll raise my thumb up a bit and then it helps, it won't wiggle as much for me if I lock this thumb up. So I have something like this going on. And you've probably seen that in videos. But just for me, I've noticed that it kind of helps me to slightly stabilize the thumb as well as the gun. And so in the two-handed grip, it looks like this. Um, anyways, some people comment on it. They're like, that's wrong. Or, Here's how it's done. And, I just was curious if I was the only one because I do think I'm in the minority here and I was able to find when watching 3 Gun Nation TV another shooter and this and I know I don't I'm not a good shooter so you know my opinion doesn't matter but this is Quan Watson who is a very good shooter Quan is a well-known outlaw 3 gun competitor in the heavy metal division he was also the winner of our semi-pro shoot-off in Las Vegas last season and won $5,000 cash for payday courtesy of Beretta. So hopefully you'll uh, see what he does and... All right, Pat, like you were saying, heavy metal division shooter, how tough is it going to be to transition over to tack ops for corn? You think it'd be really easy, but because rifles have so much less recoil, you tend to over-control them because you're used to the recoil of a 308 and a 45. Pretty accurate shooter. We were talking about that before off camera, how he's an accurate base kind of guy. Oh, stop booing.
There's nothing wrong with it. There are dozens of us. Dozens! You know, it, depending on the, the gun it is, that could change. So if I'm grabbing a 1911, if I've got a safety to ride on or something else going on with my thumb, this could change completely. But on this gun, uh, this is the grip I've found that I like in dry fire the most. Uh, and I use it so anyways just trying to explain what I'm doing and I openly uh, I welcome criticism and critique and, and, and advice and your own experience so feel free to comment <laughs>